The 22 Hornet versus 223 Remington. Two 22 caliber cartridges with a very different background. Dave and I are going to talk about it here on the Ammunition Guide podcast. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Chris, today we're going to compare two very dissimilar cartridges. One is named after a, a winged insect, and the other is named after a guy from New York. And I think that really underscores just how dissimilar they really are. No, Dave, you're absolutely right. These are two 22 caliber cartridges that came from two different eras in time. But if you need ammo for this, or you maybe find your grandpa's 22 Hornet and you don't know where to find bullets for it, make sure you click that link down in the description and the pinned comment. Get your free $20 off coupon at ammo.com to help you save a little bit on your next ammo purchase. And while you're down there, make sure you click that like and subscribe button for us. Do all the YouTube stuff to help the channel grow. Now, as I mentioned, these are both two 22 caliber cartridges, and that's pretty much where the similarities end between these two. The 22 Hornet came pre-World War II. This was the varmint cartridge back in the day. Had the highest muzzle velocity of its time. It offered a lot more power than a 22 mag and even the more recent 17 HMR. But the truth be told, the 223 is simply just a bigger cartridge. It's pretty much superior in every ballistic category, except for one that we'll get to here in a minute, and of course that's recoil. These two cartridges really don't compare. They come from two time periods and really were built for two different purposes. Yeah, you mentioned the 22 mag. I think the, uh, the important difference to understand is the 22 Hornet has the center fire primer, which mm-hmm. just by design allows a cartridge to be significantly more powerful because its case brass can be thicker. Dave, you're absolutely right. Uh, that is one thing that uh, people are somewhat you know, critical of rimfire ammo is that it just doesn't have the power. But the 22 Hornet is a big step up in terms of muzzle velocity, power from, a, you know, a 22 Magnum. We got to really emphasize it's it's excruciatingly difficult to find ammunition for, for 22 Hornet. Ammo.com itself, I think, has only offered three different kinds of it in our entire history. So if you're considering purchasing a 22 Hornet rifle, I guess don't unless you're a real dyed in the bull collector or an enthusiast that's something you can definitely do and i would totally encourage you to do that because i mean bragging rights are always good right uh but in far as practicality is concerned the 223 is going to be cheaper you're going to find ammo for it everywhere whereas for a 22 hornet you're going to have a hard time like you said it's really tough to find ammo for it and there are multiple varieties there's a wildcat known as the 22k hornet uh, that came around. So you really need to be careful what ammo you're putting in your gun when you're dealing with the 22 Hornet. I think to put in context just how much weaker the 22 Hornet is, I'm looking at our ballistic tables here. Uh, the 22 Hornet loaded with a 35 grain bullet has almost the same muzzle velocity as a uh, a standard 55 grain 223 rem load. So it's really that that 20 grain bullet weight difference that that differentiates these two. The ballistic table really tells the tale here, Dave. You just get more with a 223. That's all there is to it. You've got double the case capacity with a 223. And that's really where we see all this ballistic performance coming from. That 35 grain uh, VMAX load is going subsonic right around 300 yards, which you're going to start to lose a lot of trajectory at that point. Now, that being said, up to that point, the 223 is going to shoot flat it's going to shoot faster and it's going to hit harder and i think we really got to touch on this with a 223 rem you can get pretty much any kind of rifle you could possibly conceive of 22 hornet are there even magazine fed 22 hornet rifles i don't recall seeing a 22 hornet ar-15 i'm sure somebody will post a link down in the comments that it has been built by somebody somewhere at some point uh savage the savage 25 varminter and the ruger 7722 are two modern uh, adaptations for the 22 Hornet. So you can find a rifle for it if you really want to shoot it. But the truth is, you really have to want to shoot it at that point. Because like you said, 223 is just everywhere. The sky's the limit, honestly, with the 223. Whereas with the 22 Hornet, you really are limited what you can find. And most of them are going to be older rifles. Yeah. And your applications. I mean, the 22 Hornet is a varmint rifle by obligation. It's just yeah. uh, not natural. You could use anything for home defense. It's a single-use firearm. That's for sure. 
I have to agree with you, Dave. It, it really has one purpose and one purpose only, and that is varmint hunting at relatively close range. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't even consider this one a prairie dog gun. Your range is somewhat limited on a 22 Hornet, whereas you could get something faster for prairie dogs that you want to take out at long range, or even a 223 would do better. And this is kind of my issue with the 22 Hornet is that its holding zone is so small. And like you say, if, if you're going for perceptive rodents at long distance, uh, the 22 Hornet is just not going to give you that distance you need. Yeah, it really doesn't. I know that it's popular with coyote hunters uh, because typically you'll see those in closer range. But again, it's really not all that much better. And the 223 is just going to be more powerful. So you're going to have more of a chance for a one shot takedown on a coyote, which is, of course, what you want as a hunter. For me, the 22 Hornet is, has all the nostalgia factor to it. You know, it has that that old feel, that pre-World War II feel. And honestly, the 22 Hornet was so popular back in the World War II era that the Air Force issued a survival rifle with soft point 22 Hornet ammunition with the stipulation that it was not to be used for self-defense because that would be a violation of the Hague Convention. It was very popular back then, and it really just kind of fell off after World War II ended. The 22 Hornet just looks old-fashioned. It's hard to really put it into words, but it's got that rim... Mm -hmm. It's got a, a very, very slight taper with a much longer neck than you would see on so small a cartridge if it were designed nowadays. Yeah, that rimmed cartridge really popular back in the day. Nowadays, not so much. And I think that's one of the things that really inhibits its use in a semi-auto firearm is that rim on the cartridge. That can cause problems in a magazine it's referred to as rim lock. Rim cartridge is usually not the best for semi-auto fire, and the 22 Hornet, like you said, really just has that old-time feel to it. And that is, speaking of you, you're talking about the slight taper on the, on the shoulders. That's one of the things that the K-Hornet did to kind of improve on the 22 Hornet was to give it that sharper shoulder to increase the uh, case capacity just a little bit to give it a little bit more muzzle velocity. Well, you mentioned the one thing the 22 Hornet has going for it, if we're going to compare it to, you know, not only the 223 Ram, but the 22 250, is its slower recoil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that is a huge benefit, and I think that's why people loved it so much back in the 40s. We're talking about one-third the recoil here. Typically, your 22 Hornet's going to have something like 1.6 foot-pounds of uh, free recoil compared to four for a 223. Now, of course, everybody is going to be like, well, four is not much either. But honestly, the, the 223 is so comfortable. You can spend a whole day at the range shooting this. You're not going to feel it when you go home, and you're going to have a big grin on your face because you got to spend the whole day at the range. Uh, but honestly, with the 22 Hornet, yeah, you're going to feel even better uh, if that's possible. I'm not quite sure how, but uh, it's going to be a very soft shooting gun, and that is the benefit to it. And so if you are incredibly recoil sensitive, and I mean incredibly recoil sensitive, a 22 Hornet would be a better choice if you can find ammo for it. Well, if you're a, uh, the kind of psycho who reloads his own ammo, like you. Yeah, like me. That makes it considerably easier to, to get your hands on 22 Hornet ammo. That is one of the big things that if you want to shoot 22 Hornet consistently, you're going to probably have to take up reloading to make sure that you have a consistent ammo supply. Now, I know that uh, the Hornet really got a resurgent with when Hod Gadon released some of their Lil Gun and H110 powders that work very well in the cartridge. I know a lot of reloaders were very happy with that, with the results they were getting from that. So that is something that you'll probably want to invest into if you want to shoot a 22 Hornet quite a bit. Finding the brass can be a little tricky, whereas finding 223 brass, you can basically trip over it at the range wherever you go. Now, of course, before you pick up somebody else's brass, always ask them if it's okay, because they might be a reloader too. But if you've got a 22 Hornet, make sure you save all of that stuff, because you're going to have a hard time finding it. So, Chris, uh, wrapping it all up, it doesn't sound like we're recommending the 22 Hornet all that strongly. Not really, Dave. I think that if you are, like you mentioned earlier, if you find, you know, your grandpa's 22 Hornet rifle, don't sell it. All right. Keep it. Keep that as a family heirloom. It's a piece of history. It's something that you can pass down to your kids or your niece and nephew uh, or just to the next generation. It's a wonderful old cartridge. It has that feel to it, that nostalgia feel that's just fantastic that some people just love. They feed off of that. They enjoy it. And that's really where the 22 Hornet comes to. It's enjoyment. If you love shooting your 22 Hornet, if that just trips your trigger in more ways than one, by all means, go out there, find some ammunition for it, 
and go shoot the thing and love it. But if you're looking to buy a new firearm, I can't recommend the 22 Hornet at all because there just aren't that many firearms for it. They're few and far between, and it's kind of hard to find the ammo. Whereas 223, you can basically get any gun you want, and you're going to have a blast with it regardless. So no matter which one you choose, make sure you get all your ammo here at ammo.com. Click that link again down in the description or the pinned comment, and we'll see you out on the range. <laughs>